Hi guys, I tried to um, come on here early, but I'm having some issues. I don't know who it is or what's going on, but I keep trying. You know, I keep trying, but it's very hard. It's other people always in my storage, uh, in my stuff, you know, and I see them. You know, and I'm sure Google and everybody else see them because I've complained, complained, complained. Uh, but I'm going to just keep trying to continue the best that I know how. But I see everything, you know, that people try to do. I see it all the time. So, anyway, I want to come on here and talk to you a little bit more today. We're supposed to be doing our fast, you know, our 31-hour fast. It's starting from, mine started at 1 o'clock. No, it started at 1.30, actually. It's going to go all the way until 8 o'clock tomorrow, and it'll be 31 hours. So you can start your fast at any time, and we're doing a fast to get up to, um, trying to get up to 48 hours. But uh, we're going to go 31 hours. Anytime you start it today, and then you count it until tomorrow, and when you get to 31 hours and you're counting whatever time you come up with, that's when you come off your fast. It's 31 hours. Starting today, you can start it now, you can start it later, uh, whenever you want to start it. I started mine at 1 o'clock. It was from 12 today to 7 tomorrow, but I started mine around the 1 o'clock hour. So tomorrow around the 8.30, about 8.30, I'm going to come off my fast. So I'll talk to you some more about the fasting. But I'm on here, guys. I think we should do a little reading. So I want to read to you... Uh, we was reading about the church. Remember the Laodicean church? God said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. But he said, because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. That's the Laodicean church. And um, let me see where it's at. It's in the book of Revelation about the churches. Remember I was reading about the church of Ephesus and... Uh, all the various churches, Church of Philadelphia. Uh, the last one he said, the Church of La Laodicea. Laodicea, that was the last church. He said he's going to come and take the golden candlestick away from them because their church was neither hot nor cold. It's lukewarm. It's sort of in between. So he said he's going to spit them out out his mouth and that's the one he hated most of all the one that said they serve God but they didn't and then the one that say they not serving God you know they kind of in between what they call straddling the fence you don't know what you want to do he said that's the that's the one that is not gonna make it with me nowhere you're not gonna make it so um what I wanted to talk to you about, I have quite a few things, guys. But let me, I want to first go over the Lord's Prayer in this Bible study, Luke 11, 1 through 10. I'm going to go over the Lord's Prayer. Let's find that. The Lord has been dealing with me about the prayer because everybody says the Lord's Prayer, you know, has been said and People use it quite often in various churches, but I don't think they know exactly what they're saying when they say the Lord's Prayer. Okay, it says, And it came to pass in Luke 11 that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. 
I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his inopportunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and it shall, and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. For every one that asks receive, and he that seek find, and him that knock, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask his father, bread of any of you is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give thee? Now, um, and he was casting out a devil. Okay, so it goes on and on. But what this is what I want to tell you about the holy the Holy Spirit here in this in this verse. I mean, the heavenly Father. It says, "Listen at this, guys." It says. Teach me how to pray. And he says, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, Jesus told them to say, Listen, Father, your name is great and your name is sacred. In other words, you come into a covenant. When you come into this prayer, people say this prayer haphazardly. But listen, you saying, and, and, and this when you saying, Lord, your name is hallowed. Your name is greatness. You saying his name is sacred right there in the first. You saying you honoring him in the first place, in the first sentence. You're going to honor him. Father, your name is majestic. It's wonderful. It says, hallowed be your name. Your name is hallowed. Your name is holy. Your name is majestic. You, he's saying right here, this is what you say. He said, come to the Father with honor and respect and dignity. Come in with honor. Come in with glory. This is what the first sentence say. Don't say that like haphazardly, hallowed be thy name, da, da, da. No, no, no. That means something. And your words mean something. Your words have life. Listen to what I said. When you pray, our Father, which art in heaven, he's in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. How great is your name. Thy kingdom come. Heaven is coming. Right here when I say this, when I'm when you speaking, thy kingdom come, you asking God to come on down here from heaven. God, you're here from heaven. You're right here with me. We're in covenant. You're with me. I'm saying this prayer to you directly. And he's listening. And then it said, your will be done. His will, not your own will. Whatever you say, Father, I'm putting my trust in you right here. This is a trustworthy sentence. That's why this prayer is so trusted by so many. Because when they say it, it means something. It says, God, I trust you. Whatever your will is, I want it to be done. As it is in heaven, so in earth. How wonderful it is that your will is done. Whatever your will is in heaven, I want the best to be done here in earth, the best to be done. That's what that says. Give us day by day our daily bread. He's going to give you your needs when you pray to him and you believe by faith and, and by trust that these words mean something. You seal in this. He's going to give you your, what you need and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And that's why you hear people say, you're not going to be forgiven unless you forgive the other person. Because that's what this means. It says, forgive me of my sins as I forgive the other person who has sinned against me. Who owes, I feel like this person owes me uh, an indebtedness, is indebted to me for some reason. I forgive them. You saying that in this prayer. This is Jesus. When he said, hey, you saying right here. Forgive me of my sin as I forgive anyone who's sinned against me, who's indebted to me or who I'm angry against. I forgive them so that you can forgive me. 
You saying it right here. This is what this prayer is. And he, and, and let me tell you something. God knew the problems of life that will come. So this prayer was set up specifically to get you right there in, into God's covenant, into relationship. Because he said, I want you right here in relationship. Because see, you can't live your life without him. It's very hard because you have everything that's an idol to you. It's surrounding you. Everything that distracts you and take you away is surrounding you in your world. And that's why this prayer, he said, pray like this. This everything in this prayer. Listen to this. Forgive, our, forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Don't let us be tempted. But if we do, quickly bring us out. Amen? Because look, in this life you may be tempted, but you don't want to commit the evil. You understand? So you pray. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And you can see a lot of people get in trouble and they immediately say this prayer. Because God lined this prayer up for you to get direct connection to him. This prayer right here. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him in the midnight and say, give me three loaves of bread. And your friend jumps in the bed, close the door and say, I'm sorry, I only have enough for my family. He said that that's how man is. But my father in heaven will never shut that door. He's going to answer. He made a comparison to the people in the world. And he said, if this is your close friend and you come on your journey, you expect for him to give you some bread. When you pray this prayer, you expect for God to answer this prayer. So stop praying this prayer haphazardly, lackadaisically, thinking that this is just the Lord's prayer. It's been said so many ways, so many times. If you have repented of your sins and you're trying to live your life in the will of God, then this prayer means something to God and it means something to you. It means that you have a trust relationship with him and you are in covenant with him. He's going to answer you when you pray this prayer. If this is the only prayer that you know that you have memorized from the Bible, if you haven't memorized other prayers, or, or found other ways to talk to him. Then you stand on this. This is a good promise right here. The Lord's Prayer. Stand on that. But um, what I was coming on here to talk to you about was uh, the Lord's Prayer means something. I came on here to tell you that this is a covenant prayer when you're in relationship with the Father. That you're telling him, I want you to do your will. And every day that you're walking with God by faith, you're supposed to be praying this prayer, praying other prayers, asking him to do his will in your life. Now, what is the will of the father? It's glorious and magnificent because he says, listen, what, what, what Jesus said. He said, I perform miracles and I did everything in my father's name. And he told us to the disciples, he said, you will do the same and you will do greater things than what I have done. But you must come through the Father. You must come through me because I'm going to go to the Father on your behalf. So he is the high priest of heaven. He's the one that's right there behind the veil. He's the one that's taking up your offerings and taking up your sacrifice taking all your things directly to God in Jesus name. What do you mean people say in Jesus name? They're not saying that for playfully. They are saying that because it's stamped with approval because that's the priest behind the veil is Jesus. Now listen, let's go to second Corinthians three and 18. Hold on here. He's the priest behind the veil. Amen. He said, listen, I'm right here by my father. What you waiting on? Come on up here. Now, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 said, listen at this. Let me start up. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with him. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving 
of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. While we look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Listen at this. Go on down here, second uh second Corinthians five, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle will dissolve, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God. We also have given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore we are always confident knowing that while as we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. See, this is not your home when you walk with God. Also, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but we give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Amen. Don't, don't play with God. Don't be a Laodicean. Don't be someone that's not hot and not cold. But be the person that say, I know I'm not good, God, and I'm just a filthy wretched. Seek forgiveness. Pray and cry out and ask him to change your heart. If you know that you are living wrong in life and you want to make a difference, you want to make a difference unto God. You want God to change you and make you a better individual, a better human being, show you how to live right. Well, you can't do it within yourself. It's the spirit of God that changes a man or a woman. Find you a church. Repent of your sins and ask him to clean up your life. And you will begin to see things that you are doing that's not right. He will begin to speak to you every day in your prayers and in your daily life. And you will have to wash your mind with the word in order to live. Because God will show you everything that's not right in your life. And he will change your life. But you got to be willing to stand against the idols of the world. And a lot of people have idols. They can have an idol of anything. It's not just the images that you hang on your walls. It's not just the things that you do. People have an idol of a television, TV, sex, mans, women's, drugs, cigarettes. People make an idol of anything. They make an idol of church. They'll make an idol of going to church. The flesh and the desires of the body is what the devil loves to catch you with. 
catch you up in those desires of the flesh. And I'm not talking about sexual desires. I'm talking about a desire for anything. These are idols. And God said, if you serve those idols, he will let you serve them. He let people serve. He let people do. God, God said, listen, do what you want in life. But one day you will be judged because you have free will. You have free will because of what Adam and Eve did. Because Eve let the devil give a suggestion into her ear. Suggest it. A little subtle suggestion. It wasn't no apple on no tree. It was a suggestion. And she listened to a suggestion and ran with it and took it to the next person who was with her, which was her husband. He listened to her suggestion. And then he pointed, pointed it at her and said, God, the woman you gave me, gave me this idea, told me to do this. Nobody can tell a man and a woman what to do except the devil. And you give in to the temptation that he give you. Even though he was with her and they were considered together married, she, he could, he had the right at that time to say, we are not just like he told her this. He said, the one tree in this garden, we're not supposed to eat on is the tree in the middle. God said, we are not to eat the tree right there of life. We're not to eat of that tree. He said that to her, right? She went out. The devil said, oh, well, God, no, if you, the minute you do this, that your eyes will be open or what? He put a suggestion in her ear. He put a suggestion for her to do something. And she fell into it and went and did it. And not only did she did do it, she said, you know, because she heard him say that he know that this tree will be good because it was pleasing to her. It was pleasing to her eye. She liked it, how it looked. And the devil said, oh, he know that this, this right here, do this or do that. And she went right forward, took it on over there to her husband. He fell right into the trap. Both of them fell into the trap. And the Lord came in there in the midst of the day. Adam, where are you? Because Adam was the head. He was, he was the leader. He was the leader of the family. He said, Adam. He didn't say Eve. He didn't come to Eve. He said, Eve, where are you? He said, Adam. Because I made you first. He said, Adam. Adam said, Father, I hid myself. Because see, now his eyes is open. So he know he got to hide himself. Because he see the flesh. He see the flesh. The flesh is open to him. Because he fell into the same suggestion that Eve fell into. It was just a suggestion. Eve could have came to him and said, take a bite of this apple or listen to this knowledge I have for you. And he could have closed off his ears and said, no, my father said. He could have went right back like this. Where would the world be today if he would have stood up and said, no, no, he wasn't strong enough. So God sent Jesus. He said, listen, I'm going to send another man down here that's going to be stronger. And he going, but he going, he not going to give in to the temptation of the devil. The devil came to Jesus three times with temptations. One time he was very hungry because, you know, when you fast and you hungry, you hungry, you know, you fast and you fighting off that temptation. Don't give in, guys. Now we're doing 31 hours Y'all going to be tempted. Y'all y'all better be like Jesus. Be like this. No, I'm not. <laughs> look, y'all better start calling on Jesus. Jesus, I'm making it through this fast. But listen, the, the devil came to Jesus and said, I'm going to give you everything you want. You know, and he said, get up under my foot, you know, because his father already owned everything. You know, what can you give me? You can't give me nothing. And you, you know when a temptation is coming and suggestions is coming and, and the devil will come into your mind through other people, people, things, places, circumstances. The devil succumb into our minds in so many ways, so many different ways television <laughs> you know the programming of the television they program it just for you just like they give you them subtle suggestions on them food commercials when you know you on a fast 
Don't turn on the TV. Ooh, Jocato Taco Bell. Ooh, Wendy's, they put all kind of food commercials on. These are suggestions, suggestions to mess you up, get you off your square. So the devil came on on with a suggestion, messed up everything. Everybody fell into complete hell damnation on one suggestion. Now, people's minds are open to all sort of suggestions, whatever it is. Who I'm going here, I'm doing it, doing it. Idols. This is idol worship. You're supposed to pray before you make your move. Lord, what should I do about this? Should I go there? What should I be doing? You're supposed to be praying. You're not meant, you were never meant to live without the will of the Father in your life. That's all I got to say. Now I got things to do. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.